Greetings from sunny Maine, where we are in the, I don't know what, how many days I basically stayed home. I'm not even sure what day of the week it is. Must be Tuesday because I'm doing a Facebook Live. I'm Jill from Boomer Tech Adventures. And this week on Tuesday, Thursday, and then Saturday, we're going to be looking at the Apple Photos app. And we're going to start with Editing Tools Part 1. Now, last week, we looked at the camera app and looked at focusing and exposure and how we could use HDR to really create uh, wonderful photographs to capture our memories and our families. The editing tools are fantastic in that even if your original picture is not terrific, you still have a backup plan to make it better. So let's get started. We're going to be talking about the Mac computers and laptops, the iPhone and the iPad. I had wanted to do this kind of live by showing you what actually I do on my devices, but you can't share your screen from a mobile device. So I'm using the slides and uh, we'll go through them. And again, if you have questions, just put them uh, below in the comments. Uh, I don't see the comments while I've got my screen share on, but I'll certainly go back in and look at them um, afterwards. So I really suggest you grab your device, whether it be your laptop or your phone or your uh, tablet, your iPad, and follow along. Now, if you happen to be an Android user, uh, your screen definitely won't look like the ones I'm going to show, uh, but the options are basically the same, and I bet you can figure it out. So again, even if you're using an Apple device, it really depends which uh, model you're using and what software you're running. Uh, so your screen may not look exactly like mine, but again, I think you'll be able to figure it out with the information I give you. So here's our schedule for this week for me for looking at the Photos app. Today we're going to look at Editing Tools Part 1, Autocorrect Cropping and Filters. Hmm. Thursday we're going to look at the second group of editing tools which allows us to adjust exposure and color and much more even after the picture has been taken. And Saturday we're going to look at how the Photos app is organized and how one creates albums and how you name people, etc. These are lots of questions that come up in my adult ed, class, uh, ed, adult ed classes. So, when you open your Photos app, if you're on a laptop or a desktop, you're going to see something like this. You may have one single picture rather than all the thumbnails on the right. But your menu of your choices is down the left hand side and you can see at the top is photos and if you go down a bit, about a third, you'll see albums, a whole list of albums. It's because I have a lot of um, albums on my laptop. Now, it looks a little differently if you are on a mobile device. This is what you'll see. Uh, this is uh, my phone. And just, I still have some thumbnails that come up when I first open the uh, Photos app, but you may just have a single picture. It depends where you were the last time. But please notice that your menu is at the bottom. You see the blue arrow? And it's Photos, and it says For You, which we'll talk about on Saturday, the Albums, which we'll talk about on Saturday, and also the Search function. So, continuing. All right. If you're going to edit, the first thing you have to know is where that editing button is. So, whatever device you're using, if you would just tap on any old picture and bring it up so it fills the screen, and if you're on a laptop, your screen should look something like the one on the left, and if you're on a mobile device, it should look something like the one on the right. In either case, 
the edit button is in the upper right hand corner and you can see the blue arrows. Now, the exception is some of the older iPhones use a different symbol and you can see it down to the left at the bottom of the uh, iPhone picture. If you look to the left, you see three parallel lines with bubbles. Some of you still may see those um, and that's the symbol for edit. They had that for a year or two and then they went back to the word edit. So when you tap that button, no matter what device you're on, you will see a specific screen. So I'm going to go through what you will see on Macs first in three slides and then we'll look at the um, mobile devices and then we'll go into detail about what each of these particular tools uh, is all about. So the first one if you're on your Mac, laptop, or, or um, desktop, you have something called autocorrect, and it's a little hard to see in this picture. That's why I put the yellow uh, arrow there. There's something that kind of looks like a magic wand. That's your autocorrect. And again, I'll explain what each of these are once we uh, get through all showing where they are. On the Macs, laptop, and desktops, the crop button is right in the middle and you can see it's highlighted and when you tap, oh you don't tap on it, when you click on it with your mouse or the keypad, it gets lighter and you will notice that the picture that you have up, suddenly the four corners, if you look at the yellow arrows, the four corners are highlighted and those are your cropping tools. Then to the left of the crop button is filters and you can see when you tap on the filters you get a whole bunch of choices over to the right and we'll talk about those in a few minutes and look at some examples. So that's where you'll find these first three tools that we're going to talk about. Autocorrect, crop, and filters. If you are on a Mac desktop or a um, Mac uh, laptop. Now, the iPhone, the iPad, the editing tools are going to look, they're going to be organized differently. So here is, uh, I've got a picture up, I've tapped edit, and over on the right, at the very top, is that magic wand again. That's your autocorrect. And over to the left, you'll see additional symbols. You'll see three intersecting uh, circles. Those are your filters and you will also see your cropping tool which is kind of that square that's kind of tilted and it's uh, got little arrows. So those are where you find your tools. Now let's look at them specifically. Autocorrect. Autocorrect is a one-time shot on each picture and what happens is the software decides or adjusts the image to what it thinks or is programmed for the very best presentation of that image. It may have to do with lightness, it may have lightness, etc. Well, what does that look like? Well, here's an example. This is Jazz. She's a dog, she's a friend of mine's dog, and we had just picked her up at the dog shelter. She's coming in from Arkansas, I believe. So on the left is the original, and on the right is the autocorrect. Now, there's not a whole lot of difference, and you really have to look at it for detail. But you'll notice on the right, it's lightened up. Her face is lightened. Uh, her markings, I think, are more distinct. Uh, her fur around the pink harness is brighter. Now, I don't use, personally, I don't use autocorrect a lot because when I do, I have a hard time distinguishing uh, the differences. So I like to go in and play around myself. But it is something you ought to try. And like I said, especially when you look at her face, uh, the markings are very much more uh, detailed in the autocorrect than they are in the original. So it's something to play around with and learn. Uh, even if you use it, you still can go in and use the other tools. So that's the first tool uh, to explore. 
The second is cropping. Now, cropping allows us to uh, really concentrate on the most interesting part of our image. You know when you're out and about and there are lots of people about and you are they're not practicing social distancing or you're with people you don't often have time to set up the picture just as you want it you know most of us are not professionals we're not carrying a tripod we're taking the shot on the go as somebody is hustling us off to get an ice cream so once you get back and look at your uh, original image you can crop it so you can focus on the most interesting part. Now let me tell you a story. Uh, a few years ago, I was lucky enough to go on safari in Zimbabwe. And I went with a friend, and she's a marvelous photographer. Her, I mean, she has a great camera, and she had rented a lens that I think uh, weighed more than our luggage, but it was quite long. And uh, we would go out on the game drives, and uh, I'd get my, the best shot I could, and she'd be getting her shots. And then we always came back to the um, lodge for a meal. And in the afternoon, uh, there was time, because that was the hottest part of the day, time to do what you wanted. Well, I went and took a nap. Not Chris. She would sit down, and she would look at every picture she had taken and she'd get rid of the ones that she didn't like at all and then she would edit using cropping and some of the other tools we'll talk about um, today and on Thursday and so by the end of the session she really had uh, her best shots in hand me I had to come home and do it and um, I was a little less organized but it is a way, again, to get the most interesting part of your image uh, as the focal point. It gives you an opportunity to get rid of extra people in traffic. You can't get rid of all of them, but you can get rid of some of them. Uh, it also helps you to take advantage, or takes us all, to take advantage of the composition guidelines we talked about on Saturday, if you uh, tuned in then. If not, the video's on the website. You can find it. But, you know, it helps you uh, practice the rule of thirds, think about leading lines, thinking about how you want to frame your picture. So even if you forget or don't have time to do that kind of planning while you're taking your original picture, editing allows you to do so. Uh, one tip is that we really should crop when we want to get a close-up rather than pinching the image on the camera app to make it larger because what can happen then is that the picture will pixelate in other words it'll get less clear so I think cropping is probably one of if not the most valuable editing tool in our toolbox on our Apple apps so well what does that look like okay so here's just a silly little picture I took of my pooch Sammy. You can see the original on the left. Uh, lots of floor that really doesn't add to the picture. So I cropped that all out. And now I have a nice close-up of Sammy. And one can see, you can see his little face and his markings uh, much more clearly than you could in the original. So that's just one example of cropping. Here's another. I was lucky enough to go to Italy with my nephew's family. We had a grand time. And we were in Bellagio, not the casino in Las Vegas, but there is actually a town called Bellagio. It's on Lake Como. And there's this wonderful promenade with these blooming flowers uh, and wonderful trees that you can walk down the pathway and the lake is on your right. Now I wanted to get a picture, tried to capture um, the sense of what that promenade was like. Unfortunately, there were all these tourists there and they wouldn't get out of the way for me. So when I came home, I did some cropping. And it's not, um, again, as fabulous as I might like because all those people are there. But you notice what I did is I cropped out some of the sky and I cropped out a good part of the gray um, pathway and I was able then I think to emphasize that leading line those lines that draw us right 
down that pathway uh, towards what you can't see, but ends up in, a, in an old villa. So that's another example of cropping. Here, uh, well, I think this might have been Bellagio also, there was like a f little farmer's market in the square. And they had games set up, both for adults and for kids, which were kind of fun. And I saw this uh, gentleman in the picture on the left, and he was really concentrating on this game where you try to get the, uh, the block with the ball in it into one of those holes. Uh, but again, when I looked at it, uh, there I got a picture, I think, of his wife and his little girl. They really don't add to the picture. So when I cropped him, I got rid of them. And what I realized after I cropped, I really got a better look at his face, his concentration, look of concentration. And it's up there right in the grid, grid intersection, not in the center of the photo, which is the rule of thirds. And the other thing I noticed, I wish I could tell you I planned it, but I noticed is that that yellow pot of flowers becomes more prominent. And that kind of draws my eye, the viewer's eye, into this wonderful square surrounded by these pastel colored uh, buildings. Uh, where there was a lot of energy and enjoyment going on. So again, that's another use of cropping. Now, I am by no means a professional or talented photographer, but I do think in each of the three cases I've shown you, I've created a better image than what my original was. So let's move on to the third tool we're going to talk today, about today, which is the filters. These filters allow us to give our image different looks. They also allow us to change a color image to a black and white. And on the right, you can see the choices you have uh, from vivid, vivid, warm, vivid, cool, mono, silver tone, noir. And you, you have to play with them to see what the changes are and do you like one better than another. And they're kind of fun, like some people like to uh, make greeting cards or note cards out of their photographs, and uh, this gives some options for some different looks. Also, uh, if you're going to frame, you might make a series of the same picture with three different uh, filters. be kind of interesting. Well, what does it look like? Whoop, wrong way, sorry. So here's an example. Uh, the original. And uh, it's this wonderful uh, small kind of chateau and uh, wonderful green shutters and the mountains behind and you can see the Swiss flag. Well, the one on the right, it's the exact same picture, only this time I'm using dramatic warm. And you can see it shifts, it shifts the hues, it shifts the color uh, values and it gives it an altogether different view or feel. And so you can look at both and say, well, I like the original or I like the dramatic warm or maybe I like them both, which I do. I do like them both. Uh, but anyway, it's kind of fun to play around with. Now, here I've used the noir and you see I've turned it into a black and white picture, which I also like. Some, not every color photo translates well into black and white. Uh, but I like this one. Uh, I think uh, sometimes black and white photos are just stunning and uh, they're kind of fun to have. But of course on a digital camera you can't take a black and white photo um, unless you are using a filter. So those are the three tools in this part one of the Photos app. So you have homework, wink wink. Pull out your devices and play around with autocorrect cropping and filters and see what you get. We'd love you to share some of your uh, examples on our comments below, but again we don't become comfortable with any app unless we play around with it. I always tell my adult ed folks, pretend you're 13. You're not going to break your device. Uh, you're not going to ruin it. If you're worried about losing the original, uh, you can duplicate the picture and play around with a duplicate. Lots of options there. So have some fun. I hope that you'll come back Thursday 
when we will look at the other set of tools, just look at all the options. Now this is from the uh, Mac. Uh, the, there are a lot of options in this um, category also on the uh, mobile devices. Uh, they're not quite as robust as um, on the Mac. Now, one of our friends, Peg on Boomer Tech, uh, made the comment earlier that she liked the editing tools in Instagram better. Now, I haven't tried those, so I can't uh, speak to that, but she is a pretty fabulous photographer, so uh, I think her um, advice is worth exploring. So, if you have an Instagram account, you might want well to look at their editing tools. Thank you for